Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on building the Signal Sleuth. So this is a war driver that's based on the J. Hewitt wardriver.uk. It's got all the same stuff, but instead of a Sim 800L, we're going to use a BW16. That's basically going to give us coverage into the 5 gigahertz range. Um, so that, as you can see here, the Wi-Fi has a number and then a bar and then another number that's 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So this will increase your count of the things you discover because now you'll be able to discover five gigahertz as well, um, but you sacrifice being able to see GSM towers. So I picked this up on 463n7.io, that's agent.io, uh, agent's website. It was 120 bucks for the kit. We have to assemble it. We had to add four 18650s and a micro SD card. And then I had to 3D print the case. So probably into this about 150 bucks, but it expands my wiggle.net war driving to include five gigahertz, which should drastically increase our stats. So let's jump in. All right, so this is our bill of materials. Uh, everything on the left here is basically a standard J Hewitt build. So we've got dual ESP 32s, we've got a micro SD reader, the screen, we've got the ATGM 336H GPS radio. Uh, we've got a bunch of components in here, the temperature sensor. Um, these are little IPEX adapters for the BW16. So this is what the signal sleuth kind of adds on top of the J Hewitt. It's the BW16 or the five gigahertz mod. So basically replacing the SIM 800 L. So instead of looking for cellular towers, we're going to do five gigahertz devices. And the reason this works is because the serial line that the SIM 800L uses is now going to be utilized by the BW16. So it had to replace it. So we can run the same firmware, uh, just replacing the SIM 800L with the BW16. This is the RTL 8720DN chipset and that's a 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz dual band with Bluetooth system on chip. Uh, in addition to that, we've got this four 18650 battery pack. Um, so this is gonna go on the back. This will provide quite a bit of power. We've got the board that Agent built. Um, you can see he's got it branded with Signal Sleuth here. This is what we'll solder everything to. We've got the antennas. Um, we've got these IPEX to SMA adapters that we can use for the external antennas. We'll have to solder on the IPEX adapter, one of these guys here, onto the BW16 to be able to use an external antenna with it. That is optional. You can use the built-in antenna if you want, but if we're going through the trouble to add five gigahertz, we might as well add an external antenna to get much better reception. And the last thing is I 3D printed the three-piece case uh, to slam this whole thing into. So what we'll start with is loading a firmware onto the BW16 board. And in order to do that, we're gonna use Windows. So let's jump over to the computer. Okay, so the reason we have to flash a new firmware on the BW16 is because when the J Hewitt firmware was modified to support the BW16, they were shipping on these green boards with a micro USB and it shipped with an AT firmware. Now what we're flashing is the blackboard with USB-C that ships with a different firmware that doesn't have the same command set. So we basically have to take this firmware from the green board and flash it onto our blackboard. Luke Switz over here on GitHub has put together this BW16 AT firmware flashing guide that we're gonna follow. And basically the first thing we need to do is take our BW16 and we need to jump TX to log RX and RX to log TX. So two wires, jump the pins in this configuration here. So I've already done that and I've already connected it via USB to the computer. So now we're going to download the Amoeba image tool. And once that download's complete, we'll go into our downloads folder and we'll extract it. And once that's complete, we'll go into the folder here. We'll go into tools, Amoeba D image tool, and we'll launch the image tool. I'm going to click more info. I'm going to run anyway. And it's telling us we have a dependency on the .NET framework, so we'll download and install that. We'll run the image tool again, and I'm just going to hit OK here. And you can see that the COM port automatically pre-populated. So if your COM port doesn't automatically pre-populate, you need to kill the image tool, plug the BW16 into the computer first, and then launch the image tool, and it should pre-populate. We'll go to Chip Select, and we'll select the 8721D here. And now we need to get the firmware to flash onto it. So we do that by Googling for BW16 AT firmware archive.org. And this first result here will take us to a page where we can click here. 
and we can go to show all and we can download the bw16atfirmware.bin. So we'll save that and do our downloads and we'll switch back over to the image tool here. We're going to change the size to 2048 and now we're going to click erase and we'll see it's going to say flash erase is processing and it'll hang there forever. And so at this point what we need to do is hold down the boot button, click the reset button, let go of the boot button and try clicking erase again. Okay, and this is having a hard time, so I'm gonna relaunch the image tool and we'll try again. And now we can see flash erase done. So the next step we're gonna do is click this browse button here and we're going to go to our downloads and we're gonna select that firmware that we downloaded, check this box and hit download. All right, we can see all images are set successfully. So at this point, we should have the AT firmware loaded onto our BW16. So we will jump over to the Mac to validate. All right, so continuing along Luke Switz's guide, you can test this now if you use a serial adapter hooked up to TX and RX, throw the AT and ATWS commands at it. I'm not gonna do that, that's a little complicated to set up, um, but you can go and find, this is a great resource. This is all the commands that work on the AT firmware and basically in the J Hewitt firmware, on the B board, we see right here where it calls AT and ATWS, and those that's basically how it does war driving. So as long as you can throw those two commands at it, you're good to go. Um, instead, I'm gonna validate just by seeing that we've got the banner on there. So if we look at the Amoeba Arduino getting started with the BW16 guide from Realtek, I'm gonna tear through this quickly. Basically, we're gonna copy this URL. We're gonna go over into Arduino settings. We're gonna add that to our boards. Hit OK. We're going to go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, search for Realtek. We'll install that. All right, now we'll go to Tools. We'll select that board. This is the BW16. I'm going to plug the board into the computer. And then we'll select the port. And then I'll open up the serial monitor. And I'll hit the reset button on the board. And we can see we've got the banner there from the AT firmware. And basically it's telling you that serial is available at 38400 baud. So if you wanted to hook up with a USB to serial adapter, you could do that and throw those commands at it. But we can see the banner here, the version is right. So we're good to go, this thing's flashed. Let's jump back over to the bench. All right, so we've got our BW16 all flashed. The next step is going to be to flash the J Hewitt firmware onto the two ESP32. So I'm gonna start by using a Sharpie to just label them A and B. And now we'll flash the J Hewitt firmware onto these just as we would if we were building the wardriver.uk. Okay, so now to get our ESP32 set up, we're basically just gonna do the wardriver.uk build. I'm gonna tear through this because you can go watch my wardriver.uk build video if you want detailed instructions. But basically, we're gonna start by pulling down a copy of the GitHub. And we're gonna scroll down here and we're just gonna follow all the instructions that are here, beginning with flashing by adding the ESP32 boards. And I'm gonna do that by opening up the A sketch because I have the A board plugged into the computer. And next I'm gonna install all the library dependencies paying attention to the specific versions except for the one wire library. I'm gonna install version 238. 237 actually won't compile with the latest version of the ESP32 boards. So I'm gonna do all of these except for this one is 238. All right, now that our board and all of our library dependencies are installed, we're gonna go through and select the ESP32 dev module from boards, and then we're gonna configure all of these settings to match here. All right, and now with my port already selected and board A already plugged in, I'm gonna upload that code. All right, now that that's done uploading, I'm gonna quit Arduino. I'm gonna unplug board A, I'm gonna plug board B in, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with b.no now and get that uploaded. Now that we have all three boards flashed with firmware, we get onto the fun part and that's gonna be adding an external antenna to the BW16. So at this point you can put it all together and it'll use the internal antenna that's etched into the board here. Still gonna give you five gigahertz, it's gonna do everything you want it to do. You're just not gonna get the gains from an external antenna. So this next part gets pretty complex. If you don't have the tools to do this, you know, just go ahead and put it together now. But basically, um, you can do this with a soldering iron, but it's gonna get pretty, pretty hard to do. We're gonna start by heating this up with a hot air gun off a reflow station, 
I'm taking this cover off. Then we've got to move a resistor uh, to jumper a separate set of pins. And then we're going to solder the IPEX connector onto those three pads there. So let's get all set up for that. And I'm going to start by applying some no clean flux paste to all four sides of the heat shield here. And now I'm going to use a pair of tweezers pushed up under here to apply some slight pressure while I heat it all up with the reflow gun. Alright, so we got our cover off here. Now I'm just going to use some 99% isopropyl alcohol on the end of a Q-tip to clean this board up. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at the resistor that we need to move. If you look, there's this big rectangle here with the red dot on it. It's these three pads directly in front of it. And basically there's a resistor bridging two of these pads. We need to take that resistor off and bridge the other two pads. So from the middle to the right, the resistor right now is bridging the middle to the left. And that's going to switch the bus from this onboard antenna to the external UFL connector. So we have to physically do that to reroute the signal to the external bus instead of the internal bus. So let's take a look at this resistor under the microscope. Okay, so under the microscope, we can see the resistor right here, bridging those two pins from the center to the left. We need to take that resistor off, move it over, and re-solder it so that it bridges the middle to the right. I'm gonna, again, use the Reflow hot air gun along with a really nice set of super fine tweezers to try to lift that resistor off and then reflow it back onto the pad next to it. And there we go. Now we've got our resistor bridging from the middle to the right. I think that came out pretty solid, so we should be good to go. All right, now at this point, we need to solder on the UFL connector that came with the kit. So this is what the external antenna is going to plug into. And if you look at the bottom side here, you can see it's got this contact point right here. That point is going to solder to this pad. And then the points on the two sides here and here are going to solder there and there. So I'm going to use the same technique with the microscope still. I'm going to use uh, a little bit of flux, a little bit of solder paste, heat it up until it's liquid, and we'll drop that connector on. All right, definitely not the cleanest soldering job I've ever done, but everything on there has a nice mechanical bond, so now we can get on with putting this thing together. All right, so on the back of the Signal Sleuth board here, there are two sets of jumpers, one for BW16, V1.2, and one for V1, the black board or the green board. We have the black board, so I'm gonna start by soldering these four jumpers together. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is add the resistor to the top of the board here. Then we'll add the temperature sensor. We can see it's keyed here. All right, next we're gonna solder the BW16 on and we're using the V1.2. So we can see there's a marker here, V1.2 pin start here. So we're gonna drive that pin lined up, flip it over and solder all those on. Now I'm gonna come through and cut all these pins down. And now we'll do the same thing with boards A and B. And now I'll cut all these pins down. Next we're going to install the GPS radio. This is an ATGM 336H and we're just going to take the header pins to short side, stick them in from the bottom, we'll solder all those on. And then we'll slam it in the board and solder it on. And now we'll cut the pins off. With our GPS radio all on here now, next we'll install the SD card reader and we're going to solder this on upside down, lining up the ground pin with the G here. And now we'll cut those pins down. All right, now with our GPS radio and SD card all mounted, we'll install the screen next.
and we'll cut these pins down. All right, now with all of our components installed, we're going to install the IPEX to SMA adapters, and we're going to do that from the bottom. There's four of these because we have one, two, three boards, and then a GPS radio. I'm going to use a ceramic antenna for the GPS for now, but I'm going to go ahead and install the adapter so in the future if I want to upgrade my GPS antenna, it's already there. So I'm going to mount all four of these on the, from the bottom side and then solder them up here. All right, with our antenna sockets all mounted, now I'm going to run all the wires through this hole and then plug them into their three IPAX adapters. With the GPS antenna that I'm not going to use, I'm still going to run it through the hole, but I'm going to put a little heat shrink over the end of it so that the metal piece doesn't contact any of this metal stuff in here. I'll probably just coil it up and leave it like right there. All right, now all that's left to do is connect our power circuit. So we're going to use this two pin header here and it's going to go in this five volt and ground right here, pointing down. And now if we line the battery pack up where it's going to go, we can see the two pin slots that it's going to plug into. So we're going to solder this socket into those two pins there facing up so that they can plug into each other. All right, now we're gonna begin assembling the case. We're gonna start with this gasket that goes in the middle. We can see Agent made this nice little cutout that's gonna hold our ceramic GPS antenna. So I will go ahead and put that into there. And then we'll drop our top board on and we'll flip it over and I'll run that antenna through the hole. We'll get that plugged into our GPS radio. Now we'll flip it over. We'll install the battery case onto the back, plugging in the power connectors. Now we can put the battery back plate in place. Flip it over. Put our top plate in place. Makes a nice little sandwich here. Okay, so now that we've got our case all together, the last thing we need to do is put the eight bolts in and they're just gonna thread directly into the plastic. Now to configure our micro SD card, I've got a 16 gig micro SD card. It's recommended you not go larger than that. I've just opened it up in terminal and I'm gonna drop a file right in the root there. So I'm gonna vim cfg.txt and here I'm gonna do sb underscore bw16 equals yes. And I'll write and quit. We'll see that file show up here and that's what's inside of it. Uh, we don't need to put the cells folder in here because we don't have a SIM module. So now we're ready to eject this and drop it back into the signal sleuth. All right, now to finish this up, we'll attach the three antennas. We'll insert our micro SD card. And now to power it, we want to make sure this switch is always up. I might even just cut the switch off so that it stays up all the time. The power button's over here. You push it once to turn it on. You'll see the lights in there will turn on on all three boards. The screen will light up. To power it off, you just hold the button down for two seconds. So at this point, it's going to tell us that we need to connect to the Wi-Fi, go to that IP address, and we can configure it and get it scanning. So as always, stay tuned, and thanks for watching.